This video is going to go through how we write out word equations as part of the Key Stage 3 science course, specifically for chemistry, looking at Year 8 combustion. So the objective for this video is to learn how to write out word equations from a chem to show a chemical reaction from a sentence. So if you are successful in this lesson, by the end you should be able to explain what we mean by a reactant and a product. You will be able to identify reactants and products in a sentence and then you will be able to convert simple sentences into word equations. So this is what we're going to look at today. Now the chemicals that we have at the start of a reaction are called the reactants. So these are the things that you put into your test tube or your beaker in order for them to react. Once they undergo their chemical reaction, the atoms are going to rearrange and they are going to form new chemicals. And these new chemicals are called products. So at the very start, we're going to have our reactants, we undergo our chemical reaction, and then we have our products. So let's have a look at an example of how we actually identify and how we write these out. So if we have copper oxide, being heated with magnesium, it's going to react to form magnesium oxide and copper. So the first thing that we have to figure out is we have to start by figuring out what the reactants are. So the reactants, remember, are the things that we start with. So we're saying if we heat copper oxide and magnesium, so these two things are our reactants. This is what we start with at the very beginning of our experiment. When we heat these two things together, we are going to form or make magnesium oxide and copper. So these are the things that are made in our reactant in our reaction. So these are called products. Now, when we're converting this into a word equation, we only want to use the names of the chemicals. We do not want anything else in our equation. We do not want to know what state of matter it is, and we don't want to know if we're heating it or if we are cooling it. It is only just the chemicals that are reacting. So the substances that we start with, or our reactants, will always go on the left-hand side of the equation. So we write copper oxide plus magnesium. Now, it's very important that we never use an equals sign. For any word equation, we should always be using an arrow. And this arrow actually means reacts to form. And we know that our products from our sentence, which are going to go on the right hand side, are magnesium oxide and copper. So we've been able to identify the reactants and the products and we've been able to convert them into this word equation. So let's try another example if we can do this again. So this is a very basic example that we're not even going to use any chemicals for. So Fatima mixed together some eggs, some milk and some flour and when she heated them in a large pan they reacted to form a pancake. So the eggs, the milk and the flour these are all of our reactants and the pancake is what we make so this is our product. Now remember we should always write the reactants, an arrow and the products. So let's take what we've got from our sentence and let's make it into um, our equation. So we have eggs plus milk plus flour is going to react to give us a pancake. Notice that I don't write the word big. I don't care how big the pancake is. That has no effect on my equation. I simply want to write the actual product that I make. Let's have a look at another example. So example three says that when Abdullah dropped a lump of magnesium into a test tube of hydrochloric acid, the chemical magnesium chloride was formed. Abdullah also noticed a gas being formed and when a lit splint was placed in the gas, it made a squeaky pop sound, which confirms that it is hydrogen. 
So this is quite a long sentence that we're looking at. So let's break it down. What are we starting with? Well, Abdullah has dropped a lump of magnesium. Now, again, I don't matter that it is called a lump. It is just the magnesium. He dropped it into a test tube of hydrochloric acid. So that is a reactant and the magnesium is a reactant. The next part of the sentence says that the chemical magnesium chloride was formed. So if this is the thing that I'm making, then that must be a product. There's one other thing that we've formed. Abdullah noticed that there was a gas and that we go to the very end of the sentence and it tells us that the gas was hydrogen. So this is also a product. So let's take those reactants and products and let's write our equation. So we have magnesium plus hydrochloric acid reacts to form. Remember, always have our arrow. Don't ever say equals. Magnesium chloride plus hydrogen. And that's our words equation. You can see it's much simpler for us to follow as opposed to the two sentences that we were looking at a couple of minutes ago. Let's look at one more example before I give you some questions to try on your own. So example four says that Saif reacted a lump of calcium carbonate with some sulfuric acid. Two of the products formed were water and calcium sulfate. The other product was a gas that turned lime water milky. Now in the combustion, topic we've already talked about this but just in case you can't remember that confirms that it is carbon dioxide so again let's have a look and see what is reacting and what are we making so what did we start with well safe started with calcium carbonate and he also started with sulfuric acid so these are our reactants two of the products it even tells us this time are water and calcium sulfate and the third product is our carbon dioxide gas. So again, let's take all of that and let's form a word equation. So we have calcium carbonate plus sulfuric acid. I've spelt it with an F here as a PH in the question, but it doesn't matter. You can actually spell it both ways. And it reacts to form, remember our arrow, water plus calcium sulfate again you can spell it with the f or the ph plus carbon dioxide and that's our word equation again much easier to understand than our two sentences so now there are some questions that you can try so we want to see can you convert these um, sentences into word equations. So you might want to write these down and put them onto a piece of paper and then identify your reactants and your products. Remember, it's always reactants, an arrow, and then products. So we have carbon monoxide burning or reacting with oxygen to form carbon dioxide. Hydrogen sulfide burning to form water and sulfur dioxide. Sodium chloride being formed from sodium chlorine. Just watch, that's a bit of a tricky one. Lithium reacting with water to form lithium hydroxide and hydrogen. Silicon hydride burning in air spontaneously to produce silicon dioxide and water. Hot lithium reacting with bromine vapour to produce lithium bromide. And calcium reacting quickly with water to produce calcium hydroxide and hydrogen. Can you give those a go and let's see how you get on. Let's finish up with a plenary. Can you remember what the word reactant means? Write down your answer and make sure that you can maybe possibly give me an example of a reactant. Do you now know what the word product means? Make sure you write down your answer. And can you identify the reactants and the products in this sentence? So your body uses food and oxygen to make carbon dioxide and water in a process called respiration. Once you've identified them, can you write the word equation?
Hopefully this has made writing equations a little bit more easy for you. So just a reminder, our learning objective was how can I write a word equation to show a chemical reaction? So we've went through some examples of how to do this. Hopefully you've been able to fulfill the success criteria because you can now tell me what is a reactant and what's a product. You can identify them in a sentence and you can convert simple sentences into word equations. If you have any questions or you have any problems, either leave a comment on the video or ask your teacher through Google Classroom or by email. And hopefully this has been a useful video and we hope to see you again in the future.